Good morning, everybody. It's Pastor Nick. It's another day of winning in the word. I'm actually in a hotel lobby, so I'm going to probably be talking a little bit lower today. I won't be my animated self. But anyway, good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you for joining us on Winning in the Word. I am excited about uh, these 15 minutes that God has for us this morning. Uh, and today we're talking about working with difficult people and avoiding unneeded conflict. Working with difficult people on Relationship Wednesday, we're talking about working with difficult people and avoiding unneeded conflict. Notice I said unneeded conflict. Why did I say that? Because some conflict is healthy. Remember, where, where there's no confrontation, a lot of time there's no growth. So that's very, very important. So let me give some shout outs and we will get started. Amen. Good morning, Paula and Chip. God bless you. Cynthia, good morning. Pastor Bazir, good morning from Pakistan. Uh, Paula, good morning. Karen, good morning. Joan, good morning. Jennifer, good morning. Uh, Natasha, good morning to you. Jerry, 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 good morning. Uh, Harry, good morning. Carmen, good morning. Amanda, good morning. Ray, good morning. Uh, Veronica, uh, good morning to you. Thank you for joining. Uh, Madeline, good morning. Debbie, good to see you, young lady. Thank you for joining. Alma, good morning. Lakeisha, good morning. Uh, Terry, uh, good morning. Uh, Elizabeth, good morning to you and your family. Uh, Deacon Daryl, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning, everybody who is joining and who will join. God bless you. Let's pray and get, get right into the word. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day, uh, for this is the day that you have made, and we shall rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. Um, I thank you, Father, for the winning in the word family. I thank you for each life, each family that's represented here. Father, I speak the blessing over their lives. I speak your favor uh, over their lives. Lord, I thank you that there's no weapon that is forming against them that can prosper. I thank you, Father God, that, that your word is victorious in their lives. Your word is victorious in their lives. And I thank you for it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So I want to get started today because um, there's there's quite a bit. And, and we'll talk about this over the next you know couple of sessions. But we, we need to understand as men and women of God, as Christians, um, we need to have friendships. We need to have friends. Uh, there, there are people that, that God has purposed and positioned to be in our lives. And we have to be effective when it comes to those relationships. And in order for us to be effective in those relationships, we need to understand how to deal with those relationships. So what we're talking about um, over the next couple of, 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 of winning in the words when it comes to relationships is working with difficult people and avoiding unneeded conflict. You know, um, this morning, Pastor Deborah was talking about the Holy Spirit. You know, let me just tell you one thing. If you're going to deal with people and you're going to deal with people in a godly way, you're going to have to have the counsel of the Holy Spirit. You can't do this in your thinking. You can't do it in your intelligence. You can't do it in your knowledge. You're going to have to deal with people that God assigns to you by being led by the Holy Spirit. And the first thing you need to realize in all relationships that you're dealing with, when you're having a challenge in a relationship or when you're dealing with a difficult person, right? The question you have to ask yourself is, is it a kingdom issue? Is it a kingdom issue? Because that determines how deep and how far you need to go with somebody. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Will this conversation or does will this relationship result or ruin their lives in Christ. Because at the end of the day, that's all that matters. So what do I mean? Something like, for instance, who did you vote for in the presidential election? That's not a kingdom issue. That's, that's, that's their personal choice. Um, do they like a, a house or do they like a townhouse? That, that's not a kingdom issue, right? Um, what football team do they like, right? Th those are not kingdom issues. So be careful that you don't allow friendships that God intended to be spiritual ones to get drug into natural affairs and you guys end up arguing about things that really don't matter, right? Sometimes it's better just not to get into those discussions, get into those debates. It's like me. Y'all see me all the time. I, I jab people about football all the time. But when I find out that somebody's very sensitive about it, I just stop. I stop dealing with them because, because I just look at it as fun. I could care less. I love the Bucks but I could care less. Cousin Faye loves the Saints. 
right? So I'm always joking with her. But the minute that she feels I'm being personal about it or or I say something, I'll just stop. Because my relationship with her spiritually is more important than a stupid football team, right? So those are the things I'm talking about. So let's start looking at these things as we develop godly friendships that we need to be mindful of. Number one, we need to learn to keep our conversations neutral. Keep our conversations neutral with people. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14 in the Amplified, where there's no wise, where there, where no wise guidance is, the people fall. But in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. So what's it saying? It's saying that our relationships with people are very important. And the reason why we keep some conversations neutral is because God's not put us in that position yet to minister that to that person. It's, it's maybe not a kingdom issue. Maybe the Holy Spirit's not re released you to, um, to speak that into a person's life. So we have to be very conscious of the, the, the conversations that we're having with people. And again, don't enter into conversation. Or here's the way my pastor taught me. Don't fight battles. Conversations aren't fights, but sometimes they can become fights. But don't fight battles where there's no spoils to be won. In this conversation that you're having, is there anything beneficial that's going to come out of this disagreement if you have one? Is there anything beneficial that's going to come out of this agreement? Now, I know sometimes people tell me, you know, Pastor, it's not always about having a positive outcome. Well, for me, it is. I'm not looking to, if I'm having a, a conversation with the, the hostess at the, at the breakfast place, I want it to be a positive encounter. I want it to be a positive conversation. Um, I want to be a blessing to somebody's life. I want them to be better as a result of, of meeting me, of spending a few minutes with me. That's my goal. That's always my prayer that anybody I encounter as a result of encountering, having an encounter with me, they'll be better off for it. That should be your prayer as well, especially when it comes to your relationships with friends. Keep that focus. You want your friendships to make people better. Okay. Number two, accept the reality of who they are. Accept the reality of who they are. When we deal with people, a lot of times when we deal with difficult people, it's, it becomes difficult because we're always trying to change them. We always have something, you know, that they need to do different, something they, they need to be changed about themselves, something they need to do better. Listen, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 6 to 9 in the Amplified. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 to 9 in the Amplified. It says, I planted, Apollo watered, but God all the while was making it grow. He gave the increase. Again, I planted, this is Paul talking, Apollos watered, right? But God all the while making it grow, he gave the increase. So neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but only God who makes it grow and become greater. Always remember you are who you are and you are who you were before God. Stop preaching to people. So stop, stop trying to make people line up to where you think they need to be. It's God that grows people. It's God that develops people. It's God that increases people. Stop trying to be God in people's lives. Sometimes maybe instead of, 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 of you know, um, telling your friends what they need to do. Maybe you need to pray to God for them. But see, you can't do that because the friendship's not about them. It's about you. It's about you getting your two cents in, you getting what you have to say in. It's about you winning the argument, right? So people don't develop in God by church time. That's another thing, especially with your church friends. You know, you think because they've been in church for 20 years, they should be in a certain place. People don't develop develop in God, become more God by putting time in church. The Holy Spirit develops people by based on call and purpose, commitment and obedience, and surrender and servanthood. Let me say that again. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit develops people based on their call and purpose. What is your call? What is your purpose? Right? Based on commitment and obedience. You must commit and you got to be obedient to what you've committed to and based on surrender and servanthood. Stop trying to expect somebody to be something they've not signed up to be. 
accept them where they're at, pray to God to move them to the next level. And that, that I just gave you applies at church. It applies in the workforce. You know, maybe you're in, at the job and you're trying to get promoted and the other person's good being in the position they're in. Stop trying to make them be something they don't want to be. I see this a lot in the church where, where, you know, we're always trying to get people to be business owners. You know, you got to be a business owner. You got to be a business owner. I'm going to tell you all again, I've made millions of dollars working in corporate America and I made a lot of money owning my own business as well. You can be successful wherever God puts you. Some people don't need to be business owners. You know, I tell you all the time, I tell people when they come to me and they tell me, God put it on their heart to start a business. I said, I say, I always say the same thing. Manage your personal finances for one year like it's your business. Have board meetings with your spouse. Talk about the plans of your, your, your home finance. Develop a PL, right? Do all those things that you're going to need to do in business so you understand what it's all about. Because business, just because you can lay tile doesn't mean you can have a tile company. Just because you can cut a lawn doesn't mean you have what it takes to own a, a lawn company. There's more to business than just doing the thing. There's marketing, there's finance, right? And then there's hiring and developing people. You know, so so don't, don't what, what, what is your point, Pastor? My point is in relationships, don't always... Um, Feel like you have to have all the answers for everybody. Be led by the Holy Spirit, right? And then thirdly, uh, what I want to close with today is know your position in the relationship. We've talked about this a lot before, uh, so I'm just going to touch on it. Know your position in the relationship. Um, you know, are you a Paul? What does that mean? Well, Paul, when Paul spoke, uh, the rest of the the, the, the the disciples of Christ at the time, they looked up to Paul. Timothy was being mentored by Paul mentored by Paul. That means when Paul said something, Timothy didn't have to go weigh it. Timothy adjusted to it. Let me say that again. When Paul spoke to Timothy, Timothy didn't have to go weigh it. Timothy adjusted to it. Why? Because Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And Timothy didn't have to wonder if Paul was following Christ. His life lined up with that of a disciple following Christ. So you shouldn't have to wonder that when my pastor speaks to me, I don't have to wonder, is she following Christ? Her life lines up. When my pastor says something to me that maybe doesn't line up with my thinking, I'm not trying to figure out, does she have it right? I'm trying to figure out, why do I have it wrong? <laughs> why am I thinking contrary to how she's thinking? I should not be thinking that way. So I want to understand. I ask her questions to understand. Pastor Deborah said it one time so well. Are you questioning me or are you asking a question? So I'm asking questions to understand what the Holy Spirit has revealed to her because it should be revealed to me. She's my spiritual mom. She's the head of my life right now on earth. She's the authority, right? Or is your relationship a Joshua and Caleb? Is it a peer relationship? I have those relationships too. Uh, take Pastor Ron and Pastor Gina, very good friends of me and my wife, right? We, we meet with them. They're, they, they're in the, we're in the work of ministry together. We fellowship together. We share. We listen. We, we talk to each other. The Bible calls it ironing, sharpening iron. That, that's the Joshua and, and Caleb relationship, right? So is it an upward relationship where you're, you're receiving? Is it a peer relationship? Or has God put you in somebody's life to sow down to them, to speak into them, to lead them? To be to to, to 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 help develop them, bring them along, right? So we need to understand that, right? We need to understand our position, and the way that we understand that is we ask God, "What is our position in this relationship?" And it's very very important that you know that because if somebody's not treating the relationship as God ordained it, then it's a worldly relationship. There's nothing wrong with worldly relationships neither. Some of you are going to just have just friends, right? But I'm telling you, as you think about your friends, I would know my position in that relationship. I would accept who they really are. Stop trying to change everybody. God didn't call you to change the world. God does that. Pray for them, right? And I would keep my conversations with my friends. If they're not kingdom issues, keep it as neutral as possible. This will help you um, work with difficult people and help you avoid unneeded conflict 
uh, when it comes to your friendships, okay? I love you, I love you, I love you. Listen, tomorrow's Prayer Thursday. We send out a link that allows people to write in for prayer. Please share that out. Um, we, we have a link. Um, it's, it's All you got to do is go to ltmorlando.org forward slash prayer. ltmorlando.org forward slash prayer. If you know anybody that needs prayer, they can submit the prayer. It goes to our intercessory prayer team. We pray for some of them live. But send them that link. Get them on the, the meeting tomorrow because we're going to talk a little bit about how prayer works and why it works. But get them on that meeting, okay? Uh, and, and let's pray for some folks. I thank you all for joining, um, for you guys coming on and praying with us and agreeing with us. The Bible says one can put a thousand to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for joining me this morning for these 15 minutes. And until tomorrow, it's Pastor Nick saying, enjoy life. Thank you.